we do. Yes, we do. Yes, and we talk and talk. So here are the questions that the fans put forward this morning. I'm going to read them. You'll answer them rapid fire. Um, one of the first questions someone asked was, um, we're talking about, again, Cycle One. Do you remember this DVD set, Jay? Do you have this one? <laughs> You're probably on better stock than I do. I'm, mine is probably in a box somewhere, I'm sure. Can you guys see this? It says right on the back, the two Js. Yes, they love this little section. Oh, lost my phone, but that's okay. Technical glitch. Woo, it's crazy. Okay, let me lower this chair a bit. There we go. All right, first question. It says, being it that it was cycle one, did the original vision come together as planned? And basically, the way the content was put together, did it come together properly? Miss J, you could dive in. Well, I wasn't a part of that planning. I am just only asked to be involved. So I don't know how that whole thing came about as with production. I remember Tyra calling me up one day and she asked me, she had a show idea that she wanted me to be involved in. And then Top Model was born. Yep, that, and that was another question someone ha had asked. It was like, how did you become involved with the show? Um, and the other funny thing is when it came to the photo shoot creative, there's another question here was, did a photographer ever drop out or did you not have a photographer? That's kind of how I became the creative director. And you remember this, Jay, was literally, we, there was like a round table meeting. Season one was just bare bones producers. And they said, oh, we're doing a photo shoot tomorrow. And they looked at me, they're like, do you know a photographer? <laughs> And that's basically how I brought in Troy Word, who's an amazing photographer. And we right. shot that, that famous photo shoot with the girls with the snakes and Robin doing. I know you oh, do the impression. Get it, 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 get it. Exactly. So the other question was, how long does it take usually for an entire season to shoot? Which is a great question, because we would take four days to shoot an episode. Right, Jay? But yeah, but would it be like almost two months? Yeah, but a physical production, it was about two or two and a half months because we always would travel abroad. Uh, and yeah, it was really weird because we'd shoot four days in a row and then we'd start the next episode. So you didn't know what day of the week it was. We knew, we'd always say, what day is it? Is it a day one, a day two, a day three, or a day four? It's kind of how we feel right now on lockdown. <laughs> yeah. On quarantine, it's like, what's, what's the day? What, what, what's the day? So I said, no, baby, it's not Tuesday, it's Sunday morning. <laughs> exactly. Someone else asked, were there any, did, um, on the panel, were there disagreements about the contenders? And if so, what was the outcome? And how did that help the relationship? <laughs> Go ahead, tell me about the disagreements. <laughs> uh, he's like, next question. <laughs> Were there disagreements? Yes, there was. Uh -huh. Yes, there was. And um, beginning in the beginning of the show, it was me going into real serious how I would look at a girl, what my thoughts were on her body, face, so forth and so on, forgetting that it was a TV show. Yes. And that as beautiful as she was, she had a personality, and it would have just been useless for her to be on television, that they're just another pretty girl. I'm going to so, jump to an, I'll, what you just said. I'm going to jump to another question somebody asked. And they, they said, can you explain a bit about the process of making Top Model overall? Because they said initially, like in the first few seasons, the show seemed more grounded in a more realistic situation. And then it became more like a reality show later on. Ms. J, you have an answer to that one? Because it was a reality show with some professional yeah. But, it, but they were saying it started off more grounded. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think, I mean, I know one of the things that I discussed when it came to the photo shoots with Tyra, I mean, we would literally just sit in a room and go, what do, what do you want me to produce in terms of the creative? And she always wanted it to be grounded in something that she had done, like as a model, like, yes. you know, especially in the beginning, she's like, oh, I remember posing on this branch over a cliff, it was ridiculous. She wanted to do things that were, that she had done to show what models have to go through. And, and I do agree that's where the show started. Um, but the, this other question that someone has here, they go, did, this is an interesting question for the way reality is now too. It said, at the time, did we feel like it was difficult to be men in the fashion industry, and especially on this show? Was it difficult to be men in the fashion industry? Yes. <laughs> I'm sure they probably meant to say gay men, but I don't know. But they just wrote men. I mean, Jay was always a pretty one. 
but I was always the fierce and fabulous one. I mean, I wouldn't let show guys being authentically myself because I knew nothing else. Yep. I wouldn't be, be who I was and being me, doing me, and I've been that person from then until now. So it's nothing new to me. And so all this stuff that's happening now within fashion and men, this whole pansexuality and this whole gender fluid dressing, I've been doing that since my christening year. <laughs> since your christening year. Wait, and you, guys don't, and you guys don't even know. Okay, we would travel all over. We're always in hotels. And people would talk about my relationship with Jay and say, oh, is it a real relationship? You guys don't even know. I'd be going to sleep, toothbrush in my mouth, and then I hear this on the door, like, knock 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 I'm like it can only be one person it's late and it's this one in a gown that he's hand stitched and he's like what do you think like I wish I actually had a camera phone at that time because, yeah, because then I would have been filming been, that because I didn't have I didn't have my, I didn't have a mannequin so I was my own fitting model and I was sitting sewing it on myself and also Couture, two darling. yeah Couture. and Jay and Jay would be going to bed early because Jay would have early morning shoe calls because most of you guys really pay attention. Jay and I were not always together on the show as a duo all the time. So there were days that I would have off from work and Jay would be going to work, so he'd be in the bed early and I'm still up at three o'clock in the morning trying to make a goddamn ball gown. <laughs> a ball gown. Done. Done out of his mind. It was made. Oh, someone asked a question, because I love this. We're keeping it season one specific because every Friday we're gonna do a different season and we got tea. Wait till we get to the later seasons. But um Someone is asking, why did you all let those people cut Ebony's hair uneven at the makeover? <laughs> <laughs> because I am not, well, for me, I'm not a hairdresser. Neither am I, it, wasn't but... my, it was my idea. Yes, and someone did ask, in conjunction to that question, did I feel bad because this was all tied to the makeover? And it's your favorite line. It's your favorite line you always say to me about Nicole. What did I say to Nicole? Jay, you always go J. Manuel to Nicole about how, I'm like, if you don't want to be here, you can go back to wherever it was and flip burgers at Burger King or whatever. Miss oh Jay always God. quotes that. And, and I'm always going to give you Miss Ebony's face. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, someone else wrote, um, well, they were talking about makeovers again. Uh, oh, this is interesting. With this pandemic that we're in right now, do you think it was fair that Adrienne was expected to show up after judging after she was hospitalized. And I'm trying to remember that situation. Did she have food poisoning? What was it exactly that happened to Adrian? and then she had to go to judging? Do you remember that? Was it gas? I don't know. I think it was food poisoning. But nonetheless, it's not the same thing as COVID-19, but I don't think it was so unrealistic. Um, oh, here's a good one, Miss Jay. You can answer this one. Did Adrian really get the cold shoulder from Revlon and Wilhelmina, and how come she never got her prize money? I'm not, I don't sign those checks, baby. I wish I could answer that question. Um, I don't work with Revlon. I don't, I don't have no surprise money. <laughs> yeah. And Adrian and I are not friends, so I can't get the teeth from them. But maybe I should try to link to them and get for a call. So <laughs> call. you know, and the interesting thing. With the money. Well, the interesting thing is people ask me that question as well. And, uh, you know, I started, I became the creative director in season one, but I didn't produce on the show from, till, from season two onwards. So I really don't have an answer for that one either. Um, uh, oh, this is a good question. Did the girls get to keep their portfolios after the competition? I believe they got yes. them after the show aired though, right? Yes, after the show aired, they got to keep yeah. them, of course. The girls then went through them and took out what they didn't like, what they considered was not a great picture of them. Some thought that the agencies knew that they were on the show, that they wouldn't accept them or the clients would like them. I'm like, no, that's not true. You know, it's just add to it, just add and take away. I mean, this is how you started your career. Yeah. And, yeah. and don't buy the hand that feeds you. Oh, it's interesting. You talk, talk about, this This jumps off of season one for a minute, but you know, when this, Jump started a lot of careers, whether people wanted to agree with that or not. And I know there's been a lot going on with, you know, they've been talking about Winnie Harlow and her controversy around saying that, you know, she was like, <laughs> what do you think about, did you feel like that jump started her career? <laughs> He's like, next question. Somebody did say um, here. Listen, okay. listen, I didn't know who Winnie Harlow was. 
Mm-hmm. I didn't know who she was until she showed up on that set. I had no idea who Winnie Hollow was. So that was my introduction to her. Mm-hmm. And, so um, it was an introduction. Whether, yeah, so whether it was what you signed up for or didn't sign up for, a lot of people figured who you were. And I'm glad and happy that you're working. I'm glad that you, know, you have, you know, broke that barrier for girls looking yep. beautiful with a skin condition or disease. I mean, the world is mixed of many, many people and all different types of skin types, heights, and body body um, images. But to visually, to verbally say that it didn't help you, I don't know if that was a good thing. No, I, mean, I don't I- think so either. And I think, she, I think she's fierce. Um, but you know, I, I do want to say this though, aside from Winnie, you know, I think anybody in this business, you capitalize on what you work on. You're paid to do a job, correct Jay? Like when you're hired yeah. for a job, you do you, like you create you. Like I've heard people say different things like, uh, you know, oh, well Tyra created us. I, I agree, Jay, you were Jay Alexander. You've been doing this forever. But when you do your job, you do your thing the same way like Tyra did a job. She was a great model. Let me finish finish this. She was a great model. And then she worked for Victoria's Secret, CoverGirl. And she owned her thing and became Tyra Banks. So you can't say, oh, well, she used Victoria's Secret or whatever. I think when you do your job, you own it. And that's how you create you. And also take the elements in which you're giving and make them work for you. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Let me tell you, bitches, I was never look, bitches, I was never pretty. But bitch, I'm fierce, I'm fabulous. All that to see it, I did my thing. I, I did I did me and always been doing me. Um, I'm creative. Most people don't know that I make half the stuff that I've been wearing on Almost the show. All of the stuff you make is you know, gorgeous. Um, I knew nothing about television. I was interviewed and all that stuff during, you know, back in the days, coaching the girls had a wall, but I never knew how television worked, because that first cycle, baby gave me Ajita. I would get so angry because I want to have music, not know that the music had to be paid for in order to use it. So I would be arguing with production about yeah. but that's the song that I want the girls to walk to. Mm-hmm. And then when I was speaking, they want the music off so, so that they would be able to hear what I'm saying. But again, I want the music on. So it was a lot of struggles at the beginning for there, me. There were a lot of learning lessons in season one. Somebody also asked here, um, is this the beginning of a podcast for you two, maybe? This would be fabulous. Well, why not? I mean, <laughs> let's face it. Jay Manuel did mention to me about a year ago that we should do one. And, you know, we're doing our things, you know, working and, you know, trying to make the coins. Oh, somebody right. just asked. They were like, by the way, will this be li- will this live video be posted to watch later? I have a meeting every Friday at noon. I said, absolutely yes. We will leave it in our feeds, and we're going to actually post these to a YouTube channel, which we're going to start together, so that everyone can watch these whenever. Um, did you? Oh, <laughs> that was an interesting one. Do oh, this is a good one. Did you and Miss J Alexander know each other beforehand? Oh, See, I had seen you. You don't know this. You don't know this story. I had seen you. I had seen you at a fashion show. And Miss J was giving me the, he was with Andre, you were with Andre. And I remember you were just, you were giving your looks, you're looking around, watching the girls doing your thing, but we didn't really officially meet until production. But I don't remember the day we met. Oh, oh, baby, I do. (laughs) Uh Oh, Oh, baby, I do. You know how guys, you know how guys, you look at stuff in a fashion show, you said, I wonder who would wear that. Uh-oh. And one day, the first day I went into that room that was about, I swear to God, 20 feet by 18 feet in the hotel room where they were doing the judging, Tara said, oh, my God, Mitchell, you got to come by and see how we do because you may be a guest judge on the show one day. I said, okay. And I remember I arrived there in the hotel room and then in comes J. Manuel in a full-length embroidered sheepskin reporter Cavalli coat. <laughs> oh, God. With a pair of flare jeans on, oh, and, he a, and he had a, a Saint I think it was a Saint boot, the <laughs> heel. She gave me heel with a um, I want to say it was a Louis Vuitton bag, but he had on the Jean Paul Gaultier tattooed long sleeve <laughs> t-shirt, and yes, I thought I remember. The, the kids that I gave her this. <laughs> And Jay Manuel gave you this. Hi, Jay Manuel. I said, hi, this is you too. And then I said to myself, under my breath, so that too goes and buys that shit. 
<laughs> I believe it. I believe it. And then the first phone call from Jay was when we were in Milan. And Jay said, oh, no, 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 because first, because first season we weren't in Milan. First season, remember what we dipped to pa we dipped to Paris and back. But don't you remember? And I remember you, you know you calling me, going, "Oh, so you're all going to Paris? I live in Paris, but for some reason I'm being st I'm staying in New York. That's the tea. Why do you and stay my... in New York?" <laughs> And I was pissed. Ooh, I was pissed. And I couldn't stand why they went to Paris and did not take me to Paris. And I'm saying, but I'm kind of like, living there. And that's what you do? It was no. a learning, I think it was a learning lesson for everyone, including the producers. And they kind of realized uh, that absolutely, you know, kind of through that first season, who you were and what you did. I don't think they even really knew initially. Yeah, they didn't really get it. And a yeah. lot of people don't realize that the Fridays are gonna get more insane because remember, we're talking about cycle one. Cycle, this is cycle one. When we get to cycle, cycle two, one. the stories get way more delicious. Like, wait, wait, we got a few more questions like, wait, though, wait, wait, wait. Some little tidbits for the future. Like me being left in a certain airport, Without anyone meeting me there, take me in the beat for two and a half, three hours. Oh, they forgot and then, was coming. And who did you call? Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I always got called in the drama. Someone, someone asked um, uh, in the first season, was there a lot of last minute prep uh, for, for challenges? Let me tell you about season one. Season one, they'd have these little huddle meetings. It wasn't like the way reality shows were produced today. And even the way Top Model, season two, it drastically changed. There was a structure meetings but it was very season one was like huddles it was just these huddles what are we going to do next office. it was yeah it was crazy that's why in season one oh do you remember that we came to my apartment because they had to shoot something after a judging and they go oh we don't have a, the restaurant fell out we don't have anywhere to shoot so i said we can yeah. shoot in my apartment and then all the girls came over and tyra was over and we were just shooting in my living room and on top of that it was such a harsh harsh but this is why friends and fans why a good editor is so important in TV and film. Yes. A good and editor. Producers. And producers, yes. Because baby, uh, Top Model Psych 1 Limited was all mammy made. It was mammy made. It was just all tossed together. And But when you put it together. That's they were, magic. That's magic. Magic in the edit and good editors on production, which is very, very important. I'm, I'm sure you were there. It was so funny because our relationship just grew very, very quickly over season one. When season one was done, we were on the phone almost every day, you and I. Right, but right, what's right. interesting is I even remember, like, we were talking about it even with Tyra one day at dinner. Uh, I can't remember where we were. And she was like, oh, yeah, we'll be lucky if we do one or two seasons of this. People won't probably won't. And, like, we didn't, nobody knew while we were shooting it the first season. This season, nobody knew this was, it was going to be what it became. Do you agree? Yes. Like, 24 cycles later, of 24 cycles later, well, you know, a few without us. But anyway, yes. <laughs> Someone did ask also, I don't have an answer for this. They're like, is, is there another cycle? Because everyone's asking, well, Tyra's talked about another cycle. Is there another cycle coming on? I mean, I've not heard from anyone, not that, yeah, I don't know. So I, don't, I can't answer that well, question. I don't know either, but I know she's always wanted to finish at 25, so I'm sure she's got something cooking under her wig, because you know, Tyler, you never know. Did you say under her wig? That's not nice. Well, <laughs> Tyler wears wig. She, she knows. She'll see oh, oh, okay, I'll go back to the questions and be safe. Uh, what was the most surprising or upsetting elimination for you in season one? And, oh, can I just say this? Can I just jump in with this one? So, for instance, one of my favorite lines from season one, of course, was the famous shoot that I did in Budokan in Paris with, uh, where the girls then had to pose nude with jewelry. And uh, I remember Robin, the week before, they did a bra and panty shoot. So Robin and Shannon cornered me in the bathroom. Uh, and if you actually watch that scene again and carefully look at me, I'm actually laughing. But they're trying to make it look like I'm serious because the editors are trying to make it look like I was angry. But I love those two girls, both Robin and Shannon. And Robin looked at me, and she knew I was laughing. 
She goes, last week it was a bra and panty. This week it's two ribbons and a thong. My grandmama always told me if you don't stand for something, you can fall for everything. And when I tell you, I nearly fell out on the floor. And guys, that is Shangela's favorite, favorite, favorite. Now, whenever I text Shangela back and forth, we, we end it with that. And Shangela, when Shangela does it, it just brings me to tears because it's so funny. And Jay, this said about the eliminations from cycle one. Yeah, that well, yeah cycle one. So I felt like that that elimination was a little unfair personally, but I wasn't on that panel. So, you know. Yeah, and I wasn't on the, pa I wasn't on the panel either. Because I was, yeah, I was in a judge until cycle five. Mm -hmm. So, guys, like I said, when you tune in, the more you tune in, the more tea is going to be poured. Oh, of course. Someone asked a question here. That it's interesting. They're asking if I'm Spanish or Mexican. That's because, Jay, you always, <laughs> you, you always change up my ethnicity. I'm actually very mixed, but my family's from South Africa. Uh, but, yeah, but I'm not Spanish. Uh, but and I love cousins. Them. Our cousins have ashy feet because I've seen them. <laughs> Would you stop it? Would you leave my cousins alone in South Africa? Oh, and for the record, because people are talking about you and I and all these questions, Jay is tall. How, how tall are you, Jay? Six foot four. Six foot four. How tall am I? I am six one. So the problem is when I stand next to Mr. Six four and Nigel is six four, right? Yes, Nigel is yeah, tall. Okay. As well. So imagine the two other men on the show are here. I'm here. Tyra's 5'10", but she wears huge heels. Yes, so every, everyone th everybody thinks I'm like 5'6", but I'm 6'1". Um, according to Jay, I mean, I don't have any proof of that. I never took a measure. Here's a, here's a question. It was popped in by one of our favorite producers who only started on the show in cycle nine, Ms. Cher Aguilar. Don't we love Cher? Cher yeah, popped in a question. We love Cher. Are you kidding? Uh, she wants to know from cycle one, she, since she didn't work on cycle one, she wanted to know a little bit of dish about the Janice antics. Like, what happened with Janice in season one? Uh, well, I remember meeting Janice for the first time. Actually, it was hilarious. Do you know this story, Jay? No, I so don't. When I met Janice the first time, I walked into a room, and she's doing a wardrobe fitting. And she literally went like this and pulled her dress up over her head and was standing there in a thong. And she was like, hi, don't you like my tits? That's what she said to me. That was how I met her. And I probably would have said, how much did it cost? <laughs> uh, you know, like I said, I, 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 the, 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 hey, hey. But you know what? She has a great, the thing is, is as much as people want to say that Janice had crazy antics, the thing that I do love about Janice is she really speaks from her heart. I really think she has a good heart. I know it's. Yeah, I know it sounds she, crazy. She really does, and I've and had great conversations with her sitting in her trailer. From, and she speaks from her truth and her true experiences in the business. And she slayed magazine covers. She was an amazing model. Yeah, she 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 spoke from a serious place. She, she spoke from a real place about the business. So she was giving you real serious questions and answers. Yeah. Um, Someone else asked here, oh, well, oh someone's asking uh, why, so a question for you about Elise. It's a two-part question. You know, your famous Elise rant from Cycle One. And then they asked me what made I me decide. I know it takes time to be, you know, what did she call me? What did she call me? I think, wasn't it a dick slice? Dick slice. Yes. Damn. <laughs> what did she call you? What did you do to her? I just said to her very, I said, you know, I said, you know, it's, it's a lot of work, you know, being a doctor. I know it takes a lot of work, you know, <laughs> dick slice. Uh-huh. Um, and someone asked me what made me go from brunette in season one. Good eye. Yes, I was a brunette Stress. in season one to the silver. No, I did not get gray. <laughs> actually, actually, the real story behind it was that it was a bit of a dare. We, were, we weren't really finished shooting cycle one. And I was talking about creative that we could do for season two. And I, show, and I showed Tyra this picture of like Flash Gordon, but he had silver hair, not blonde. And the way they, the, the cartoon was drawn, he had like darker skin, like my skin tone. I said, like, oh, wouldn't this work? And she goes, I dare you to do it now. And I'm like, well, we can't do it till we're done taping. So literally I colored my hair the first time one week after we wrapped uh, Top Model season one.
See, that's not what I understood from, from what you said. Oh, God. I was told. Oh, what were you told? What's the thing? Was that they couldn't get Bridget Nielsen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, oh no, you gotta you gotta spread your rumor. You know what Jay would tell people? By the way, Jay is a real shit disturber. Let me just tell you what he would tell people. He would say for the longest time in the first few seasons, he's like, Do you ever notice how you don't see Jay and Tyra in the same room at the same time? Because really Tyra is just Jay and Drag. Clever editing. Clever editing. We'll talk about the as a fancy once. Miss J, J Manuel is a makeup artist, and I said I know. <laughs> He's like, yeah. So, they, oh, here's a question for Miss, oh, Miss J. Uh, could you explain a bit of the? Oh, they wanted to talk about what was your inspiration around your first walking lesson. What did you want the girls to get out of that? I just wanted them to get how to stand up straight. Oh, stand were they not even standing up straight? And feel the music and keep their personalities, which is so important, I think, in a walk that you just keep you, but that you're able to deliver what they want. Because some designers want you to walk a certain way, there's a certain feeling that they wanted. And that was in the beginning. Things have shifted now. I mean, the models are coming in all different shapes and sizes. But I think in the beginning, it was just that they look good and wear clothing and just really make the clothing come alive and dance. I think it's but, important. But the real key key was, I remember just hearing the word on the street when they said, he wants to do his walking, t like just with just in like a pair of underwear and a t-shirt. They, they, I don't even think they were ready for that. Producers were not ready for that at all. No, yeah, I mean, it's I just stripped out of my clothing, and the reason why I do that is because when I was teaching girls in Paris, I would come out of my clothing to put on the ball gowns, the big skirts, and I began to make and those. See things. them fabulous <laughs> legs. You know she got fabulous legs. That's why. so I, you know, I um. You know. Um, <laughs> yes. Yes. The beauty of being at home. <laughs> Ooh, oh, man, but, no, I'm not moving because they don't have any panties. Yes, so. and that I believe. And that I believe. Okay. So <laughs> the one of the last questions, which a lot of people asked, which was, "What was the biggest lesson that you learned from Cycle One?" I think I know what mine is, but you go first. What's your biggest lesson? Oh my God, my lessons from cycle one <laughs> to allow those who know what they're doing to do, allow those who know what they're doing to do it. Ooh, that's a good lesson. I wish everyone on the crew thought of that. Um, yeah, <laughs> but, <laughs> some people will remain nameless. Um, but uh, yeah, for me, I think the interesting thing was. Um, well, I think it was always my work ethic, you know, just if when you're passionate about something, dive into it. Like I was not originally hired as a producer. I was doing all the girls makeup on the photo shoots. I was doing Tyra's makeup every time you saw her on camera. I was doing all these things. And yes, I had produced shoots and stuff in the past and creative directed projects. But then when they said, oh, do you want to take this over? I actually, I remember Tyra turning to uh, Ken, one of our other executive producers saying, Jay needs to produce the creative going on. And, uh, I think the biggest lesson is if you have a passion, follow it, do it. Like, yeah, do it. I mean, but a lot of kids today, they're like, what am I getting paid? Because in the beginning, I was just like, I didn't even think I would be paid more. I just thought, okay, well, I'll just do it. Because, I'm here anyway. you, because you love it. You love what you do. So right now, I'm looking at people I'm sitting at home right now who uh, have some sort of fame through social media. Right now, I'm sitting at home like this. <laughs> Creating content. <laughs> Jay, come on. No, I'm sort of sitting at home thinking, okay, what can I do now? Because they're not out in public, showing up, being paid to show places. So you have to create something. I mean, I'm looking at television talk shows right now. It's hard for me to dive into them because you realize just how important production is, no matter how small or how big, yep. to get things moving and get people in the right order. I mean, you can't sit down and watch somebody at home, I think, trying to hold a talk show where they've had a huge audience, which is what they feed off of. That's me personally. Um, I'm thinking like, well, but we at least throw some personality and character in there. So if you can't... Someone's chiming in going, you're so right. I love these. I'm reading the comments down below. They're like, yeah. you're so right. If That's you, hilarious. If you yeah, if you can't sit back there and, and take the piss of yourself, I, look, mm -hmm. I'm insane. I do what I do. But the things that I know about, 
I talk about things that I don't know about. I listen and learn. I always say, listen with your eyes. <laughs> listen with your eyes. Because so, with that, you see things that, and you're learning things from other people. No one told me how to do makeup. No one told me how to do hair. No one told me how to sew. So I think the, the interesting thing that, um, or maybe another thing we can do is give like a teaser into next week. Cause I think you're all gonna wanna tell your friends because next week we go into season two and that's when it got real, real. Season See, two. You, Milano. Okay, no, season two, we went Milano. to. Milano. Milano, Oh yes, we went to, oh yeah. Cause Milano. season two and season three. Oh, can I do a teaser for season three? I just have to. I know that's so weird. We should save it for next week. Do you remember what happened with the girls when they flew abroad? Oh, the time that I was left in the airport? Oh, no. Th yeah, that, that was season, that was season three. three. But do you remember what happened with the girls, though, when they tried to oh, Uh-huh. That's the teaser. You guys are going, well. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the story. See, I think what's interesting about the upcoming seasons, and we can actually talk about it now, there were a lot of things we couldn't talk about for many years, but now they're just little tidbits that I think people would like to know, like the little behind the scenes tidbits. Oh, like I said, <laughs> friends and fans, the more you get to the episodes, the bigger the stories become, and yeah. the more things happen because you have, remember, the beginning we were just getting our feet wet. But yeah, they, season season one, I think everyone was re was kind of, and season two to an extent, people were loving the magic, the show was taking off. Then yes. as it grew, more things happened behind the scenes, and I think that's what you go on to and in for, the real stories, because you know, the great thing about Instagram Live is we're live, and there are no censors uh, and filters, because things have been, there have been stories that have spun out of control over the years, but they've been spun, like Olivia Pope, you know, she spins things. Well, clear. Jay Manuel and I never, ever, ever slept together at more once. Um, <laughs> <laughs> once. And. Um, Ooh, but the conversations not, on these I'm, overnight flights, you and I. I I'm not. I'm, I only strap one thing down, and that's with all the waist. So I'm not. Nothing <laughs> moving and dangling bits. Um, <laughs> I saw and asked me, where do you put all that? What do you mean? I just, what? Okay, this oh. is turning into a and after dark, honey. You're like, where do you put all that? Look, the kids are not trying to. No, uh, no, they down below. no, Jay, they're meaning by right, all my outfits that I made. Uh, oh, the outfits that you made, exactly. Well, we will tune in next week. This has been fun. It's been a fun little half hour lunchtime chat. We will do Thank it. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone, for joining in. Next Remember, Friday. The story